When you go in the tackle shop, it can be quite confusing. There's so many different leads available for carp fishing and it's hard to know which one to use in which situation. So in this video, we're gonna cover just that. In my pouch here, I've got a selection of leads that I will often bring. First of all, are inlines. These leads, rather than being clipped onto a lead clip or uh, attached to your lead setup, instead they slide directly onto your line, which makes them very easy to use. I'd actually advise these are great for beginner anglers because it's probably the simplest type of lead to use. The only thing is they don't cast so well when you're going for real long distances. So I wouldn't advise these for casts in excess of maybe 80, 90, 100 yards. They're great though for flicking around in the margins, lowering in uh, traps in the edge, particularly when the lake bed is quite firm. They sit nice and low profile against the bottom. Hook the fish very well. The fish feels the weight of the lead straight away as it picks up the rig. And the main reason I have inline leads in my armory is because they're perfect for solid bags. Nothing drops inside a solid bag neater with less tangles and less clutter than an inline lead. As I mentioned, inline leads aren't the best for long range fishing, but when you need a big cast, this is where a distance lead comes into play. These are perfectly designed to be aerodynamic, have the weight at the front so they cast further, straighter, and just basically more accurate than any other type of lead. You would normally use these on a helicopter rig or clipped onto a lead clip. They come in a range of sizes. If you're going for maximum distance, I tend to find a three or four ounce lead is the perfect balance between enough weight to give it a big thump, but not being so heavy that it actually doesn't fly too far. I think a three or four ounce lead, I can maybe get that 150 yards at a push, and I'm not the best caster. You'll need these if you're fishing somewhere where you need to cast a long, long way. Next up is a bit of an unusual one. These gripper leads don't come into my fishing, my carp fishing, all that much. I use them all the time when I'm barbel fishing on the rivers because the way they are sort of shaped with lumps and bumps, quite a low, wide profile, means they grip the lake bed or river bed in my case. On the rivers, it's particularly important because when you've got a lot of flow or leaves coming down, there's a lot of pressure on that lead and these grippers will hold bottom. The other cool thing about gripper leads is you can wrap paste around them and the paste won't fall off too easily. I find paste is a great way to sort of draw fish towards your rig if you're fishing in very murky water or maybe on a, on a big wild river. The last thing that uh, gripper leads are used for is fishing on a sloping lake bed. You're fishing on the edge of a plateau or on a steep sloping margin. The gripper will lay on that and hold in place far better than a, like a rounded, uh, pear lead for example. Speaking of pear leads, these are probably the best leads I've found for feeling a drop. So when you're casting around and you want to feel that lead crack down on a little clay spot or on a patch of gravel in amongst some weed, this will fall through the water at the same pace very smoothly and you'll feel as that rounded heavy end donks into the bottom. I know I'm getting quite subtle now and it's only a minor difference compared to the other leads available. However, if you've ever used a flat pear lead like this and thrown that out into the water and tried to feel the drop, particularly in deep water, it will kind of flutter a bit as it falls down. It just makes it that little bit harder to feel the lead hit the bottom. If you're fishing somewhere that's very important, you get directly on the right spot, feeling the lead down is definitely better with one of these pear leads that's rounded rather than flat. However, the flat leads do have a place, I suppose, in that they're very low profile, hard for the fish to spot, and uh, perfect really for any short range fishing. I've also got two types of leads in here that you don't actually use on your rig. These are marker leads. This is what you'd have set up on braid, so you can drag it across the bottom and feel what's going on because there's no stretch in the braid. Or you might have it on a marker float rod and um, just cast it around and find out what the depth is in your swim. One of these marker leads I've got here is four ounces, so you can cast it really far. You can feel it crack down against the bottom and it's just reasonably good for like long range casting. The other one, not so good for casting at long ranges, but it's got these probes on the outside. These little prongs mean that when you cast it into your swim and drag it back across the bottom, you're gonna pull little bits of weed or leaves or twigs off of your spot. I sometimes use these uh, if I'm really keen to see what type of weed is on the bottom in the swim I'm fishing. Also, 
If you're fairly certain that a little bit of weed has grown up in the place that you normally like to fish and you just want to clear it off so that you can put your rig in and feel confident, a few casts with one of these probe leads, you can quickly pull a small amount of weed off of your spot. The one thing I'll say about that, don't go casting this right out into the middle of the lake over a lot of weed because weed is very heavy when you're trying to reel it in and you might find yourself actually snapping your line whilst trying to yank it through. Instead, make shorter casts and work your way out so you only pull a little bit of uh, detritus in each time. I've got a selection of sizes of each of these leads and I won't necessarily bring them all fishing with me every time, but it's kind of handy if you've got maybe a couple of one ounces, maybe some twos, threes, and the odd four ounce lead if you're going to be making big casts or fishing in very deep or fast flowing water. One little tip that I'll leave you with is if you don't have leads that are big enough uh, for your session, for example you're on a river and it's kind of pulling through and not holding the bottom, there's absolutely nothing wrong with slipping two leads onto a lead clip, giving yourself more weight and more chance of holding the bottom. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you and explained a little bit about why there's so many different leads available. Good luck with your fishing and don't forget to subscribe to the Fishing Tutorials channel for more videos like this.